again, thanks so much for taking time to talk to me. I really do appreciate it. No, I'm so happy to be here. Really excited awesome. to talk Nocturne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, congrats on being a new dad. Um, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a uh, it's a very exciting time <laughs> for have, multiple reasons. I have to imagine, like, and I mean, you've been with like Netflix Castlevania series since the beginning, right? Yes. Uh, I like to remind people that when we started on the original Castlevania, I believe Obama was still president. So <laughs> a lot still has changed since then. And uh, so, it was, but I believe early January, 2017, Trevor Morris asked me to help him out with the series. And it's been easily the most rewarding project of my career so far. And it's such an amazing project because, I mean, I talk with a lot of people, uh, composers who do legacy projects, but like this is, we're talking multiple systems, we're talking decades, we're talking multiple series, like how do you even begin to approach something like this? No pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was really cool. It was a, a learning process for me and an evolution. I played the games as a kid. Um, I uh, I think my favorite of the series. Uh, did you play any of the Castlevania games? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So my, yes. yeah, yeah. So I loved the games as a kid. My favorite is probably Symphony of the Night. I'm replaying it now. There's an iOS app, and I thought it would be fun to play it before the series comes out. And it's so much harder than I remember. Those older games, <laughs> I think they had to kind of make up for the 2D look by just making them impossibly difficult. I think I died in like the first five, 10 minutes, uh, my first my first run through. So while, even though I played the games as a kid, I don't think I appreciated how immense and passionate the fandom still is and i learned that throughout the process of scoring the original castlevania alongside trevor um that was a situation where trevor was brought on to score it he needed some help so i helped him by co-producing and writing some additional music on it and so i got to kind of grow into castlevania slowly through learning from trevor and then also learning about the show and the fandom associated with it. Uh, by the end, I really felt like Castlevania was kind of in my bones and I, it kind of reignited my own love for the games and the franchise. And so when I found out about Nocturne and Trevor approached, approached me to actually co-score it with him, it was probably the easiest yes of my <laughs> career. <laughs> so given that you know this show has been going for you know so long now like how do you approach each season and specifically this the, the series nocturne yeah so the the process for nocturne was very cool and very different from series that i've worked on in the past we actually started i believe it's almost two years to the day uh because one of the characters, Edouard, is a uh, is a world renowned opera singer, and he's played by uh, Sidney James Harcourt, who's a phenomenal vocalist. He was, if I'm not mistaken, he was in the original cast of Hamilton, uh, and he's just absolutely amazing. And so, Trevor and I were asked to start off by working with him on some classical pieces that the character performs throughout the show. And so we worked with him, we, we co-produced, wrote some arrangements and, and kind of helped start that character off way ahead of time. And the cool thing about that was all that we had were scripts. And it's so rare that we get to work from the scripts originally. Typically by the time we start a show or a film, there's a locked cut and you know we're six weeks away from the dub and it's a mad dash to the finish. So it was very cool to get to know the characters intimately from the beginning. And something about seeing words on a page, seeing the character uh, backstory written out, oftentimes in multiple paragraphs, seeing the scene direction, uh, descriptions of the setting really helped us get in the mind frame of the show. And so we were well acquainted with the material for about a year before we even score started scoring the picture. That's such a rare blessing that most composers don't get 
did you did you find that your ideas you came up with from the script worked or did you have to scrap some things uh both it, there were some themes that we wrote uh ahead of time that we thought were absolutely amazing and then when you put them up to picture it just doesn't work for whatever reason uh but at the same time there was some material uh there's a lullaby that one of the characters sings, which we wrote well ahead of time, again, probably a couple of years ago. And that lullaby ended up becoming one of the main themes for that character and appears all over the show. And it's a very simple melody, but for some reason, once we saw it up to picture, it just worked and we use it all over the place. So there's some kind of magic that happens when you're able to live with a show for as long as we have. And like that seems to be part of your career is that you've really gotten to work on some very well received long running projects, um, be it the Diablo computer game series or Ozark or Fear the Walking Dead, um, or like even new ones like The Witcher. Uh, like, how is it like balancing? you know, when you're doing, you know, documentary work for something that's new versus like these projects that have been going for, for years in some cases? Yeah, that's a great question. Sometimes I feel a little bit like Forrest Gump because <laughs> I'm just kind of asked to be a part of these amazing, amazing, uh, long running shows and franchises. And <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a weird responsibility, especially to, to start in the middle in a sense, or even at the end in Castlevania, I mean, it's been decades and decades, and then we show up, and we're tasked with uh, with helping in the evolution of this franchise. It's a lot of pressure, for one. Uh, I'm I'm very aware of how passionate the fans are, whether it's whether it's Diablo, whether it's Castlevania, whether it's Vikings with Trevor. All of these have passionate fan bases who really care about the music, which is very special. There are times when I score a show or a movie and I'm very aware people watching aren't necessarily gonna notice it. And sometimes that's for the best. Sometimes the best score is one that is doing its job and doesn't stand out. But it is a, it is a very uh, rewarding level of pressure knowing that every moment of the music is gonna be scrutinized and it does kind of force us to raise our game. And on the one hand, we're storytellers and story comes first always. That was something that Trevor has always instilled in me from the beginning. But at the same time, knowing, knowing that there is a, a passionate fan base all over the world definitely inspires me to kick it into high gear and saying, well, I've told the story and I've done my job, but can we make some art out of this? And I have to imagine it's fun getting to go into all of these different things because it it means you're not beholden to like one particular genre or or style of music. Like I have to imagine that you know foundation or fear of the walking dead is very different than yeah. castlevania or vikings yeah and so there's a few different ways that i would answer that one way that i've kind of been blessed throughout my career is i've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different composers uh whether it's learning from trevor or danny and saunder or bear mccreary it's i've gotten to be a part of some of the best composing teams on the planet. And so I've learned a little bit from everybody. And I think that I've taken bits and pieces and used that to form my worldview, my storytelling ability, and my, you know, my musical ideas. And so that's been very cool. Uh, on, in addition, I'm just a person who loves variety. I love, I love learning. I'm always passionate about, about picking up new hobbies, uh, reading about new concepts and ideas. I, you know, whether it's world history, archaeology, financial markets, economics, uh, I love 
I'm a student of the world and that inspires me. And so being able to work on projects that span from horror to drama to documentaries about food and wine and we, Trevor and I scored a documentary about sea urchins. And so every time I get a new project, I feel like I'm opening up a new book or um, or I'm you know learning a new concept that I hadn't that I hadn't been introduced to before. And for me, that keeps me going and inspires me to keep chugging along. When you're when you're approaching something that is a genre piece that's set during a specific time, do you ever find yourself like having to delve into the musicology of like the era or the, you know, regardless of whether it's real or not? Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, one of the cool things about Nocturne especially was in college, I studied uh, early music and classical music very, very in depth, especially classical music of this period. So it kind of gave me a chance to dust off some of some of that uh, some of that stuff. And it was a cool opportunity to to try to get in the world uh, musically and then see what works and what doesn't. There is very much elements of the score that come from that period, but there are also elements that are very anachronistic. Um, whether it's we used we used harpsichord uh, uh, as the main instrument for one of the villains, but accompanying that is didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we we like to uh, we like to use some of these bold choices to tell a story in a way that is true to the franchise. Because as much as this is uh, the show is set around the French Revolution. Some of these characters, the vampires especially, have been around for thousands of years. So in the case of this main villain, we asked ourselves, well, how do we how do we highlight the fact that on one hand, she's a member of the aristocracy and she's very much of the age. She dresses in very uh, elegant and uh, gaudy French uh, French attire, but at the same time, she's existed for thousands of years, and she's this ancient evil being. Uh, how do we, how do we blend those two? Well, harpsichord, and then a process didgeridoo that sounds like it's you know a, a demon coming out from under the earth. <laughs> that sounds like the most fun, like academic exercise I could ever possibly think of. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing that keeps me inspired and keeps me going. I love I love a challenge that requires me to learn and to do research and to problem solve. Uh, my one of my original jobs when I moved to LA and got into this business was teching uh, composer rigs. It was you know seeing like, okay, this computer's not working. What's the problem? Okay. Well, there's no manual for this because this computer was hand built for this composer. So how do I go in and the nuts and bolts and figure out how to fix it? And sometimes when I'm presented with these musical problems, I feel like I'm using the same set of tools. I'm saying, okay, there's a there's something we have to solve. Uh, what can we do to solve that? Well, what do we have to do? What do we have to learn about the era? What do we have to do that's outside of the area? How can we be anachronistic while still staying true to the show? And I think the the ultimate uh, the ultimate product of that is something very creative and inspiring to me. That's fantastic. I can't wait to get to see this when it comes out in a couple of weeks, and I'm sure everyone else is just as excited as I am. And Trey, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to me. This has been really delightful. Oh, same here. Same here. It's been really fun. We've been excited about this show for years, and it's so nice to be able to get out in the world and talk about it. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Same to you. Take care. You're welcome. Bye-bye.